All right, so now we're gonna use uh, another portion of Lunchbox. So we have explored uh, the panel tab, uh, but now I'm gonna get into the structure. So the structure is pretty similar, uh, but in instead of creating those geometric panels, it creates a uh, point and uh, line structure, which is perfect for uh, applying our structural members to it. So um, first what we're gonna do is I want to offset the surface kind of like we had already done uh, in the rotating tower so that it's offsetting the uh, distance of the structure or the radius of the structure so that it, it sits flush and, and flat to the interior face of the facade so we'll do an offset whoa offset surface And uh, we will then do, uh, we're gonna pull in the member that we want. So we'll do the category again. Down structural framing, I've already pulled one in, but I'm gonna plan on uploading the majority of structural components that you can use uh, onto Canvas. So structural framing, uh, element type picker. And yep, that's what I want. Actually, no, I want the larger one, sorry. So four inch. Um, and then I'm going to, what is that component called? Inspect element. Plug that guy in and then remember to double click. I thought, just kidding. Show all parameters, there we go. I think you can do something, one shortcut to do that. But in any case, um, so we need that outside dimension. Um, we want the radius of that. So we're gonna divide that by two. And before we do that, and let me, for everyone who probably missed that, divide by two. And remember that the uh, parameters coming out of here, while they are numeric values, for some reason, um, there's a bug, at least in the 2020 version, where it's not reading it as a true grasshopper or rhino uh, numeric value. So you wanna use the absolute component to take that dimension and create a absolute value that Rhino and Grasshopper like. Plug that in. And then what we can do is use another stream filter. So depending on which side you want your surface um, or your structure to be on, you can do a stream filter same thing we can actually you know we'll just go up and copy and paste so it's basically this guy right here um, stream filter and the number slider from zero to one but instead of a reverse list we're gonna use a negative component I'll plug that value in plug that guy into the one plug the output of the division into zero. And let's organize this a little bit better so you all can see. All right, so we'll plug this guy in. And it's very difficult to see. So let's, for right now, let's just multiply this by five. Oops, I'll multiply the 
this one by five. Okay, there we go. So let's see. So this is, man, this is a small value. I said there's only two inches. All right, so this is offsetting on the top. Uh, obviously, we'll want our structure on the bottom. So we will flip this by changing our gate on our stream filter to one. So it chooses the negative value. Now we have the surface offsetting to the inside. We can take that multiplier off and plug in just the regular result of the absolute. Delete this. All right, and then pull these guys away because we're going to use that in a little bit. So the then we can use one of these structures up here. So in the ladybug, or excuse me, lunchbox, wrong L. Uh, in the structure, you can do multiple different things. Um, so you can do a 2D truss. Um, that's usually good if you have you know, a geometry that, a 2D geometry um, that you want to create a, a singular truss system out of. And then you can do all of these different 2D uh, grid structures, you know, typical one, a triangulated, multiple different triangulated ones, hexagonal, if you want to do that. Let's see that guy. I don't think I've done this one yet. All right, I'm going to hide... Um, the curtain panels for right now. I'm gonna unenable the adaptive component so it doesn't rerun on me. All right, so uh, for all of these, it's gonna ask for, oh, and I'm going to go up here and unpreview this. And unpreview this, just so it's really clear. All right, so it's going to ask for a series of U and V divisions. Um, and this is where the uh, even when we went in and made these even, that's where these are going to come in. So we're going to divide these. Divide. I guess it's division, excuse me. Uh, I'm just going to make a thing from one to, let's say, four. And then I'm going to create another division. And basically, I'm going to plug the U and V values in to these divisions and then that way that the structure is a directly related division to the facade All right and then if we want to create a larger structural pit, uh, grid we can increase that by two So you can do the quad, of course you can adjust the shape if you want. Um, that's interesting, toggle hexagon grid type. Let's try and use a toggle, a balloon, toggle. Interesting, it probably just selects different points along the grid. Cool, in any case, uh, so those are the hexagonal. Uh, obviously, you have the typical um, other ones that are just asking for the surface and the U and V divisions. Um, the one that I really want to focus on, which I think could be really cool for a lot of your projects, is the space truss. So um, if any of you had taken my computational methods course, uh, we would have learned how to create a space trucks, a space truss, excuse me, from scratch. Um, but uh, for right now, since that is not the focus of this course, uh, we will use the shortcut, which is the uh, the lunchbox version. So there's two different types. Um, the first, and I'm gonna just preview that for right now. The first base truss, uh, and for those of you who don't know, it's a three-dimensional truss system uh, that 
you use to span really large distances with uh, complex curvature. Um, and so, and it's, it, it creates a really unique and, uh, in my opinion, beautiful uh, structural system uh, for the different geometries. So what you can do, plug in the surface, plug in the U and the V values. And then the one thing you can do with this is the truss depth. So you can see if we start to pan around. Well, first it's creating uh, the structure on the wrong side. So we're going to flip this surface. Which did not work. Hmm. Whoops, I remember now. I did this in the, uh, the other one. So if you have a truss and it's on the opposite side of where it should be, it should be on the inside so that the shape of vice is on the out. Uh, what you can do is with this truss depth, you can either do a negative or a positive number. Let's do negative 5 to 5. Plug that in. Now you have the truss on the right side of your surface. And if you change that, see how it goes to the other side. So that's how you change that. Now that is uh, the, the use for this first space truss structure. The second one, for those of you who want to get real crazy, um, it doesn't ask for truss depth. It actually asks for two different surfaces. So if you want to, let's say, you know, structurally, you'd want this corner. Oh, wait. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I need a ground plane to help me orient. Uh, this corner, since it's lifted up, you would most likely want to have a smaller structural depth here and a larger structural depth in uh, the bases. And so what you could do is take this surface, offset it and manipulate the offset uh, within Rhino to create the, the structural depth that you'd want. And then you'd plug in those two surfaces into here, that first initial surface, and then that second offset surface with your U and V divisions. And it would create a similar a similar uh, structural truss system, um, but with those differentiating uh, depths. We won't do that for right now. We're just going to stick with the current space truss. Um, so then what it asks or what it outputs, excuse me, are primary lines. One set is for the inside. Let's see. So one set is for the major structural lines that are on the actual surface itself. The second group is on the, the offset um, structural system uh, that is currently five feet away. And then the web lines are the lines that are connecting those two together. So we're going to take these two components, copy them down. So I have the larger version here, and let me just do a six inch one. Might be too thick. Um, and then I'm gonna do the smaller one here. And what I'm then going to do is use the same component. I'm gonna pull this over. And these the same component that we used in the rotating tower, uh, the add beam, and plug these into the type and then take these primary lines and add them to the curve. And then do the same thing for the second. And then I'm going to do a third add beam. Uh, but this time use the smaller one and use the web lines. Uh, 
All right, so there you go. All right, so these are a little bit off. So I'm going to increase these and probably decrease these. A space truss is typically pretty similar in structural depth. So I'm going to decrease these to four, maybe. Yeah, four. All right. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Probably could increase these to three. All right. Oh, now we have our structure. We have our facade. Remember these guys just error out for whatever reason, but giving those pluses click should work. Unhide our glass, and there you have it. So let me close out of this real quick. Turn off the shade. All right, so now we have our glazing system and our structure course you can do whatever different type of system you want and of course uh, this is the integrated structure if you have a uh, independent structure like a column system uh, that's independent from your uh, double curved surface and geometry then feel free to use that as well but this is just showing you a different way to approach it that we haven't really covered before um, and yeah and uh, next video I think next video we'll be focusing on the shading device and how to influence those parameters to do uh, different attractors, point attractors, curve attractors, and also how to use Ladybug to have them react and open and close depending on where the sun is.